Welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concept of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. So uh, we've been talking about Mahayana Buddhism for quite a long time because uh, uh, Buddhist uh, sculptors of Japan, they are from a Mahayana Buddhist tradition. But you know, we don't give uh, too much attention to Theravada Buddhism. And, uh, but you know, Theravada Buddhism is very, very important as well. And today, I have a perfect person uh, who can explain to us a little bit about the Theravada Buddhism so that you guys have a better understanding of this tradition. So, welcome. I'm really happy to have you, Bhante Ananda. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, Bhante Ananda, please tell us who you are and uh, uh, your little bit of a history behind why you became a Theravada Buddhist. And first, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Yujiro Seki, to organizing uh, this video conversation all the way from United States. Well, I am Bhikkhu Ananda. In addressing, you can just call me Bhante Ananda, which is a popular term in, in Theravada Buddhist, uh, among Theravada Buddhists. Well, I was born in 1967 uh, in a suburb of Kathmandu Valley, a village called Valambu. At the age of 13, due to the influence from my village Theravada Buddhist monastery, where I used to go visit and take uh, religious classes from my young days, due to my growing interest, I thought of renouncing household life and choose a monk life, which can lead me a better and peaceful life, a successful life. So at the age of 13, I renounced my family and home to become a Theravada Buddhist monk. Uh, now, uh, I would like to ask you this main question. So what is Theravada Buddhism anyway? What is the core teaching of Theravada Buddhism? Theravada mainly emphasize on what the Buddha taught originally. It preserves and practice the purity of Buddhist teachings. So in summary, the three canonical texts that is called three Peter Taka, three baskets of Buddhist canonical texts are compounded, are comprised of these original teachings. They are called Sutta Pitaka or discourses of, you know, advice or admonition. Vine Pitaka, discourses of disciplinary rules and regular regulations for monks, nuns, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and lay people and Abhidhamma Pitaka uh, discourses on higher uh, doctrinal teachings. Mm. So these... No, I, so, so it is, uh, sounds very difficult, so, but the, in a nutshell, so for the lay people who don't know anything about the Buddhism, so what the core teaching? Okay, so for ordinary lay people, Theravada Buddhism uh, means 
you know teachings of our real life which uh, helps us to free from our suffering that is called uh, how to uh, gain enlightenment by you know practicing buddhism by practicing meditation so based on mainly on uh, on three main buddhist uh, disciplines called sila samadhi and panya sila means first uh, practicing the moral disciplines second on the foundation of moral discipline you improve your mental uh, development on which you uh, practice you know meditation it is called concentration or tranquility of your mind so it is called samadhi in in other words tranquilizing your mind and panya then you when you develop your mind through meditation then you reach a higher wisdom it's called panya or, or it's a, it's such a uh, intellectual and uh, wiseful stage of your mind in which you can see things as they really are the um, impermanence of the world and then suffering of the world and then soullessness of the world so when you uh, understand or when you realize these three characteristics of this life then you can realize what is life and what is the world and then you it will help you to you know free from the bondage of this birth and death so that is called nibbana or that is in other words you know final freedom from your all sort of suffering so theravada uh, emphasizes mainly based on you know this uh, you know uh, cleaning your mind or purifying your mind uh, from defilements called hatred you know greed aversion illusion and delusion from all sort of this which cloud your mind which you know uh, impurifies your mind cleaning all these things and purify yourself your mind and you attain the bliss of nirvana or that means in other words you have you are free from the birth and death so when you are free from birth and death means you no more uh, you are born in this world when you are not born in this world there is no aging when there is no aging there is no sickness when there is no sickness there is no suffering or pain and ultimately there is no death so theravada buddhism you know stresses on you know try to free from the bondage of this circle of life and death the free from suffering so mm -hmm. this is the core teaching of theravada buddhism no that's that's beautiful so yeah uh so in order to uh lead this kind of a lifestyle do we have to give up our ordinary life just like you did well um now you know that there's a part time duty and whole time duty so which one is you like better it depends on your choice so more you are whole timer or whole time duty so more you gain the enlightenment speed and fast uh, being a lay person also you can you know practice buddhism theravada buddhism there is no harm there is no hard and fast rule that each and everybody must renounce his household life or lay, lay life no Uh, the buddha doesn't say uh, that everyone must renounce the whole household life but the thing is the main uh, main point here is uh, 
Now, more you are free from your duties and responsibilities, the more you are free from your obstacles, hindrances, you know. So being a monk is you are more trying to be free from your household duties and responsibilities and hindrances, obstacles, you know. So Buddha has compared a lay life like um, full of obstacles, you know, entangled with so many duties and responsibilities. A monk life is compared as a free bird in the sky, you know, where there's no bondage. You are not entangled with uh, certain, you know, specific duties and responsibility that that is common in lay life. So monk life is more free and it's a it's like whole time duty. So when you have enough time, so you can develop your mind, you can you know purify your mind faster than a layman who is more you know entangled in other duties and responsibilities. So mm -hmm. this is what difference. So choice is yours. No, that's that's beautiful, beautifully said. So uh, yeah, we've been talking about uh, uh, Mahayana Buddhism a lot in this show, but uh, how does uh, uh, Theravana differ from Mahayana and uh, why is uh, uh, Theravana your choice? Major difference between these two. Uh, uh, in especially uh, in uh, specific uh, ways like um, Theravada Buddhism uh, mostly practice or adapted in the Southeast Asian and South Asian countries like Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and so on. So this uh, Southeast Asia and South Asian Buddhism is called uh, Southern School of Buddhism. Whereas uh, Mahayan Buddhism is adapted in northern uh, Asian countries like China, Tibet, Mongolia, Japan, Korea, and some parts of Russia. So it is called Northern School of Buddhism. And Theravada Buddhism, the main scripture is Pali scripture. Whereas Mahayana Buddhism, you know, adopted uh, uh, Sanskrit language or Sanskrit scripture. Later, uh, Mahayana texts are written in Tibetan scripture also. And Theravada Buddhism is mostly, you know, uh, focused on, you know, personal development in other words you know to make the people the mass free from suffering first you have to be you have to be free from suffering to that for that first you have to you know establish yourself in a higher level of you know emancipation or liberation then only you can free the mass or the other followers. Whereas uh, Mahayana Buddhism uh, more focus on, you know, while you are practicing the teachings in the same, in the same time, you try to, you know, uh, free your followers from suffering. So it is like, you know, in the other way, uh, you are, while you are driving, you take your followers in your own vehicle. Theravada side, uh, it emphasized that first, you have to be perfect. So you have to be free from all sort of your defilements and your spiritual advancements is the, uh, most important 
before you, you know, try to purify others. So this is mainly uh, different. And also, um, in Theravada Buddhism, you know, monastic tradition is very important. In monastic training, you have uh, teacher-student relationship, and there is a very close relationship between the Buddhist monks, temple or monastery, and lay followers. Uh, in the Mahayana also, the monastic teachings and trainings are very important. Uh, so mainly, uh, Theravada Buddhism focus on you know, purification of mind, personal emancipation, whereas being a, uh, also being as uh, arahat, which is called sainthood. Whereas Mahayana uh, focus on more on bodhisattva concept. Uh, bodhisattva means a future Buddha or or, or training uh, candidate, training candidate for future Buddha. So Mahayana emphasize on more on Bodhisattva con concept. That means uh, you, the Bodhisattva concept is more on mass base, you know, doing service to the world in a greater number. So Mahayana has this Bodhisattva concept. But uh, both Mahayana and Theravada, they share common uh, philosophy also. Both have this uh, Four Noble Truth and Eight Noble Path and also, you know, the concept of Nibbana. So these philo philosophical concepts you can have as common uh, doctrinal teaching in both schools. Mm. So you chose uh, Theravada because you wanted to focus on uh, your personal development and uh, you know, try to attain enlightenment and Nibbana, uh, whereas uh, uh, you thought maybe uh, Mahayana might not be as effective as a Theravana in, uh, in your world, right? Well, um, in my initial days, or uh, when I was uh, just uh, at the age of 13 in my teenage, actually, to be frank, uh, I didn't have clear knowledge of uh, what is Theravada and what is Mahayana, you know, to tell the truth, it is because I am influenced by my village monastery, which is Theravada Buddhist monastery. So I got that influence from that Theravada Buddhist environment and Theravada Buddhist monastery and all the Theravada uh, practices in the monastery. So from that, I got the initial is, you know, in, impact to become a monk. Uh, I don't know I, if I got in the young days uh, influences from Mahayana tradition, may, I might have become uh, a, a, a Mahayana monk also. So. Uh, yeah, this is, I think, a typical question too, but, you know, uh, do you live in monastery? I do live in monastery, and uh, monastery is a suitable and perfect place uh, to live for monks, you know. Uh, so in Pali, it is called Vihara, you know, the word term called Vihara. Vihara means a suitable abode or living or residential place. So when you become a monk, when you ordain as a Theravada monk, uh, it is a rule that you must not live in a house or among lay people. 
you know so you have you are a specific person once you become you are once you are ordained as a theravad monk uh, in the there is a sutra called dasadamma sutra that in the first verse it says now you are totally different in color in shape in uh, in your wearings so that you are now a different person outwardly and inwardly so you have to be specific uh you have to be you know different person in you know in all your ways like in your uh, wearing clothes or robes in eating in walking in meditating in all your you know physical postures and physical you know movements there is a specific uh, peculiarity uh, in your all physical movements then you know that you did as common people as common lay people so you are no more lay people and no more lay person so that you can you know talk walk or act like before as a lay person so that is why you have to be you know naturally away from this lay group or laity and also buddha has admonished uh, for initial the new bhikkhus he always you know advises or oh, bhikkhus you have now become a shaven headed you know uh, uh you know going forth monk so you not only your physical attire or physical complex but also your attitudes your way of thinking also quite different from those lay people so this is what makes you different and this is what uh, as you question that why a uh, uh, theravad monk should live or renounce household life and live in a monastery i think you are clear now Mm, I'm very, very clear now. So thank you so much. So now we're going to move into the practical question. So uh, how do you utilize the Buddhist teaching in your real life or in anybody's real life? Well, you know, Buddhism in actual sense is not religion. The Buddha, he was human being. and he achieved the enlightenment as a human person human being not as a god or agent of god or supported or aided by any supernatural being you know he was born as human being brought up as human being and he you know went on searching for 6 years you know for 6 years by asteric ascetic you know practices and he achieved enlightenment as a human being with all human skills talents and all human uh, capabilities so buddha's teachings are focused on centralize on human problems and human suffering so buddhism is based on man made spiritual guidance buddhism is called you know human way of life it's a art of living human art of living in other words mm. so it's not something you know blind faith or something mystic mystical or mythology uh, mythol mythology that you don't see or you can't hear 
or you can experience. So Buddhism is based on experiential level. Uh, so the Buddha says, I will teach only which people can practice. I do not teach or preach anything that beyond human experiences or beyond human capacities that human being can't do or can't practice or can't achieve. So whatever I teach, it's a human-based teachings. So Buddha, uh, how to you know, utilize Buddhism? In other words, suppose the Buddha has you know, preached so many you know, universally applicable teachings like uh, five precepts that is called pancha sila. Five means pancha, sila means uh, it says precepts. In other words, ethical codes. So what are those five precepts? So first, number one, you know, do not kill, harm, or harass living beings, both human and animal beings, non-humans. And then second precept, don't steal or rob or loot others' belongings. Number three, you know, don't misbehave towards opposite sex. In other words, you know, you know, you always behave your opposite partner like a man towards a woman you know, a boy towards girl, you know, with respectful attitudes. And number four, you know, you be always honest, truthful, don't speak lie or don't tell lie. That means in other words, it's a dishonest, you know, it's in a way, it's a cheating others. So once you become dishonest or once you cheat, you know, once you trick to fulfill your selfishness, then you are no more, you know, taken as believable person, you know. Then number five, don't take intoxicating drinks that hallucinate your, you know, brain, you know, and that intoxicates your brain and your memory, which leads to you to you know liable to do all sort of crimes. Bante uh, Ananda. So my movie is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and uh, I often ask this question to uh, practitioners. Uh, yes, what is Teravana view on uh, Buddhist statues. I know maybe in Teravana they don't call it Buddhist statues. It's a Buddha, Buddha statues. Uh, yeah, so what is the view of a, a Buddha statues for Theravada Buddhism? Please tell us. Thank you for your timely and important question. Well, Buddha statue is not just made of uh, normal things uh, like wood or stone or cement or fiber, grass or anything, no. Buddhist people take a Buddha statue as a symbol of veneration, a symbol of worship on which you express your deeper faith and deeper uh, veneration towards the Buddha or respect towards the Buddha. It's also a medium to understand Buddha's teaching uh, it's also medium to realize uh, who the Buddha is and to realize his Dhamma or his teaching. And also, uh, as Buddhism has three levels, that is cultural level, intellectual level, and spiritual level, uh, for the beginners in Buddhism, so cultural level is the basic level uh, 
in which you are provided uh, initial symbolic features like statues and other things. So Buddha statue helps you to calm down and cool down your mind. Not only that, uh, to cul culture your mind, to civilize your mind, which helps once you become, you know, cultured and uh, civilized uh, physically and mentally, and that becomes a basic uh, foundation, or that becomes a firm foundation to uh, enter to intellectual level or higher level of practices. So Buddha statue is not just an idol or object of veneration or, of, or worship, but also it is a, a bridge to enhance your higher and the deeper level of uh, Buddhism uh, in which you can achieve uh, intellectual and also spiritual level. Nice, nice, beautiful, beautifully summarized. So thank you very much. And uh, Bhante Ananda, uh, please tell us how can I find find out about you. So uh, yeah, tell us a you know, little bit about the how to how can we follow you on this stuff. Well, um, I'm follow. I'm I can be found in online also. My online address uh, you can find in my uh, Facebook ID, which is called which is uh, uh, Ananda Path. Uh, and also you can contact me through email. My email address is anandapath dot at gmail dot com. I'm available uh, in Skype also. My Skype ID is Bhante Ananda. And uh, presently I'm based in Kathmandu, Nepal, capital city. And my temple or monastery Presently, I am living is Sangaram uh, Vihara. Also, it is known as Sangaram Bhikkhu Training Center, which is located uh, on the way to Swayambhu Temple, which is popularly known Monkey Temple. Uh, so we are welcome. Whenever you come to Nepal, you just give me a call to my mobile number, which is Nine eight four one two one two five seven eight to my mobile number. If you call, you I am available. So um, all are welcome. Whoever interested or intend to meet me, I am presently based in Nepal. Beautiful, beautiful. So thank you for even giving us uh, your personal information, such as a phone number. But you know, make sure that you know maybe at the time of uh, uh, at the time when you watch this show, maybe the phone number is changed. So make sure to uh, email him first to, before call him. So <laughs> anyway, uh, if you guys think this information is useful, make make sure to subscribe this YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and like me on my Facebook because that's how we do it in the 21st century. So thank you very much, Pante Ananda. So thank you for, very much for coming and explaining to us about the Theravana Buddhism. I'm also so much happy by giving me a chance to thoughts and knowledge shed on different aspects of Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist statues. Thank you so much, wish you Will you, may you be well and happy. May you be free from all sort of physical ailments and mental di disturbances. Mean Yujiro, may Yujiro Seki be always happy, healthy, and strong. May your mission be fulfilled. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.